Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, winter has returned to the Ozarks. Our big stretch of nice 50 and 60 degree winter weather is over and it's starting to feel like winter again. But that's okay, it's the Ozarks and it probably won't last too long. Over the past weekend, there was a lot of crazy weather in Southern Missouri. We've gotten some emails, some questions if we're okay, because in some places I think there were even tornadoes. Yeah, it was weird. We got snow and ice and freezing rain and tornadoes and, and thunderstorms. Flash, flash flooding. Yeah, too. it was a crazy weekend. But we are fine and we are healthy and everything is safe here on the homestead. Yep, the animals are doing well. In fact, it's time this morning to go let them out. They're anxious to get out. This cold weather doesn't seem to affect them at all. So. Let's go let the animals out. Morning turkeys. The ducks are anxious to be set free. Come on. This time of year, for the rabbits, we use these rubber bowls for food and water because you can step on them, you can get all of the ice out and they work out really nice. We have a set of these for each of the tractors that we use in the winter. It's a little more work than the water bottles that we use during the summer, but We even have these rubber buckets for our goats. Get out the ice. And we have them for their water too. There. Well, it looks like Hope's water is frozen too. There you go, Mama. There, everybody's thirsty this morning. All right, Mama. We'll be back in a few minutes to come out and milk, okay? See you guys. A few months ago, we had artificial insemination done on Hope, 
And unfortunately, the first time around, it didn't take. She didn't get pregnant. But last week, we sent off a, sep a sample from the second time of our artificial insemination. We haven't gotten those results back yet. We should get them either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. But we are super hopeful that she's going to be pregnant this time. So we'll let you guys know as soon as we find out. Well, now that we're all done with chores, I thought that I would show you guys an experiment that I did several weeks ago that is going really well and I thought I would share it with you guys so you guys can try it too. You know that we're always trying to find new and creative ways to grow our own food, especially over the winter. Now this new greenhouse that we're putting up is going to be a huge help for us. And in future years, I think we're going to have more than enough of our own fresh vegetables over the winter. But right now before we get that greenhouse up we're limited on what we could grow in these cold weather months and i realize that a lot of you maybe live in apartments or smaller areas or places where you just can't get out and put up a greenhouse or maybe the weather is too cold where you are to do anything outside so i wanted to show you this uh, experiment that i'm doing in the house about five weeks ago i built these self-watering planters and you can see that they're doing really well. I started these from seed. Uh, this over here is lettuce and this is dill. Again, I started these from seed five weeks ago and they are doing really, really well. Uh, I've only had to water these about three times in five weeks and they just keep growing because they keep watering themselves. So it's a really easy thing to make. I thought I would show it to you. This is one of those things that you can make, have them lined up on your windowsill and then, you know, have fresh things to eat all winter. Today, I'm gonna to start a bunch of herbs because I'd like to have them right in the kitchen window so that as I'm cooking, if I need some, I can just snip some off and use them. And I thought it would be just a fun experiment to do. So I'm gonna set these aside and we're gonna get started making three more of these. Today, I'm gonna to try to grow some oregano, some thyme, and some basil and I'm hoping that all three of these will do well right on the kitchen window so that we can have fresh uh, herbs as we're cooking. All right so this is a very easy project to make but it's going to be so rewarding when you start growing your own fresh herbs and vegetables in the house. So today like I said we're going to make three of these. First thing that you need is pint sized mason jars, wide mouth jars, you can use quart size jars if that works better for you, but I think for on the windowsill, the pint size is probably a little bit better and a little less tippy. The second thing that you're going to need is these little baskets. Now these are for aquaponics and they sell these online. You can get about 50 of these for around five or six dollars. I'll leave a link in our Amazon shop so you guys can see them, but they're really cheap and you'll get a lifetime supply of them for next to nothing. So, and these just happen to fit right inside of our wide mouth jars. The other, next thing that you're gonna need is just some of these cheap peat pots. Uh, you can pick these up at Walmart or any of your big box stores, and those will go inside of those little baskets. So we're gonna cut these off so that they're even with the top of the basket, and that way it'll just look a little nicer in our pots. All right, so now that we have those all cut, it's time to move on to the next step. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you guys as well is that actually as I was gathering all of my supplies today to make more of these, I noticed on our shelf we had these little terracotta pots. And I was thinking, you know, if you didn't have these little baskets or you didn't want to spend the money on the little baskets, uh, these terracotta pots, I think we just got these at Walmart and I think they're only about a dollar, maybe $2 a piece. They actually fit in the top of the jar as well and really you could use these in place of these but I'll tell you the one reason that I like using the peat pots and these little baskets is that the roots can grow through and if you notice like on the lettuce that I have started not only is there the wick that I built that goes up into the soil but at this point after five weeks the lettuce has actually grown roots down into the water and that wouldn't be able to happen with this type of pot. But uh, I think you could definitely use it. It just maybe wouldn't work quite as well. All right, so now that we have these cut to size, 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a wick. The wick will go from the pot down into the water and that's what will keep your soil wet all of the time. Now, I don't like to buy fancy things. I don't like to use fancy things around the homestead. So all I'm going to use today is a piece of an old t-shirt. Uh, whenever t-shirts wear out around here, we keep them and use them as rags and things. So I just grabbed this little piece and we're just going to cut this into three strips for our pots here. Now with this t-shirt material, you can just make a little cut and then just rip it into some strips here. So we'll just make that into three strips. And now what we need to do is we need to get that from inside the basket here down into the water. All right, now the little peat pots that I bought already have a hole in the bottom. I don't know if they all come that way or not. If not, you'll need to make a little hole in the bottom. Just go ahead and push your piece of fabric through that hole. Pull it through like that. And then we also need to get it through the basket. So just, it doesn't really matter where it goes through on the basket as long as you can get it through and down into the water. All right, so then we're just gonna pull these together. And now what you wanna do, or what I do, is I tie a knot so that it can't slip down through. It's really probably, it's, it's in there pretty tight, so it probably wouldn't slip through anyway. But just to be safe, I tie a knot up here at the top, probably three or four inches from the top of the thing. And that way you can pull that down and you want about this much sticking up at the top and that will be in your soil. Down here at the bottom, you can either leave all of that or you can cut some of it off but you want to make sure that it gets all the way down to the bottom of the jar so that even when there's just a little bit of water in there, it's still soaking it up into the soil. So I'm going to just leave that all on there. And we're just going to do that same thing on all three of these to make a wick on each one of them. All right, now we have our wick built for each of our three pots. It's time to start adding some soil. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I've learned that we've used in several different applications but works really well in this application. When you go to the store and you buy just what's called seed starting mix, which is just really a mixture of vermiculite and mostly peat, uh, there's really not much nutrients in that at all. But it is really good for getting your seeds to start because it retains the moisture well and it just gives a nice fluffy area for the seeds to germinate. But like I said, there's not a lot of nutrients in that so you really don't want your plants growing in that long term. So what I do is I start by putting some organic compost in the pot first. And in fact, I fill the pot up probably three quarters of the way or more with just the compost. Now your wick, you're just gonna leave that kind of at the bottom of your pot. If you want to try to get it, you know, a little bit up, that's okay, but in the end it's not going to matter a whole lot. So we're going to just put some of our compost right on top of the wick. And we're going to do that on all three of our pots. And now once we have those filled up with the compost, we'll put just a thin layer of the seed starting mix on top. Probably, you know, half an inch or less of it will be the actual seed starting mix. Now this way, you're really giving your plants the best of both worlds because you're giving your seeds a good, easy place to germinate in the seed starting mix. And really, they don't need much of that to germinate in. They're only going to be in the first you know, half inch or less of soil anyway. And then as soon as they start to get roots and grow further down, they'll make it to the compost, which will feed them. And then the water down below will keep them well watered. So it's really a win-win for your little plants that you're gonna be growing in here. All right, so we've got those all set. Now it's time to add some water to our pots. All right, so before we fill them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and one thing I've learned is that it's best to just make a little line and you want it just below the bottom of the basket because when you fill these, you don't want to fill them so that the water is actually touching the basket. You want to keep the water line below the basket. So I just make a little line on there. 
Doesn't have to be big, but just enough so that when you're filling them, you know where to stop. All right. And now we'll just take this out. Fill our water to our line. Put that back in. And that wick is already starting to soak up your water. Now one thing I didn't mention, um, but is that if you're gonna use a piece of t-shirt like I did, make sure it's 100% cotton. Otherwise you can go to the store and buy, you know, either in the fabric department buy something or you can actually buy, you know, material that's specifically for like wicks. Uh, but you do wanna make sure it's something all natural, not, you know, rayon or something like that, so. All right, now that we have those uh, filled with water, we're just gonna get started planting our seeds. Now at this point, the soil isn't very moist, uh, but that's okay. Uh, overnight tonight, these will start to wick up and you'll notice actually quite a decrease in the amount of water by tomorrow. Uh, that's just because this first time, you know, the soil is pretty dry, it's gonna soak up quite a bit of water. So we're gonna get started. Uh, let's see, we'll just take these in order here. The first thing I'm gonna plant is some thyme. Now thyme seeds are probably about as tiny as you can get. They're less than a grain of salt. So I'm gonna plant probably more than we actually need in here, but that's okay. They're just so tiny, I wanna make sure I get plenty in there. And then once they're in, we're just gonna take our finger and just kinda rough up the soil a little bit. and pat it back down. So just so they have some soil contact. So we'll leave those there. For now I'm just gonna put my seed packet there. Don't forget to label your jar so that you remember what's growing in each one. I do that with just a little piece of tape on them after they're after I'm all done. So we've got our thyme there. Let's do basil next. And again, you can do any herbs you want. These are just herbs that I know I use a lot when I'm cooking, so. Basil, we probably don't need quite as much as we did with the thyme, but I'm going to still put probably more than we absolutely need in there. We can thin them out if it looks like too many have germinated. And same thing, we're just going to rough it up a little bit here. And then the last thing is oregano. Now when you have these first started, when you just have your seeds in them and they haven't sprouted yet, you really want these to stay almost too moist. You want them to be really humid and really moist all of the time. And even though these are self-watering and once the plants are growing, it's plenty of water all the time. For seed starting, it wasn't quite enough. So what I did one day as I was walking past the shelf where we keep all of our canned goods and I saw these sitting there and these are their half pint wide mouth jars. And I thought, hey, those would be perfect to create a tiny little greenhouse on top of our seed starting jars. So I just put them on like that and it made the seed sprout so much better. Not only does it keep it a little warmer in there, but it creates the perfect environment with lots of humidity and it just makes a nice little greenhouse on top of your jars. So I do this until I see the seeds coming up and then I take those off and I let the plants just grow with just the amount of water that it wicks up from the pots. Now on the day that we started these plants in these pots or the day that I made these, we also started some other plants that we're gonna move out to the greenhouse. And we started those in just our traditional three inch pots that we used for transplanting. Now these are doing just as well as the ones that we did in the three inch pots. I mean, those are doing awesome as well. In fact, we're gonna transplant those out to the greenhouse this week. But the nice thing about these is, I've had to water these about three times in five weeks. Those we're having to water at least once a day, sometimes even more, because we heat our house with wood and the air is very dry this time of year. So, I mean, this is a ton less work. If you're a busy person and you don't, you know, always remember to, to be there to water things every single day, or if you, you know, maybe go out of town for a couple days a week for work or whatever, this is something you can do, have it there and it will be growing for you for when you get back. So I hope you guys will give this a try. It's a very easy thing to make. I mean, you can make a bunch of these, put them on every window of your house, and you could have a lot of food growing for not much of an investment at all. So definitely give this a try. 
You guys, I hope that you are enjoying our channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. We're always trying to come up with new and creative ways to grow more of our own food. We're not 100% there yet, but we're getting closer every single day. So you guys, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to share our videos with all of your friends and family on social media. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.